Hi everyone, uh, my name is Nicholas. Uh, I work at uh, Pit Vidura. Pit Vidura is a sanitation company which does pit latrine and septic tank uh, emptying services. So I would like to walk you through how to repair a broken uh, MEC 8000 uh, lottery bread vacuum pump. So basically as a sanitation business we have these guys installed in uh, all our trucks. This pump was removed from our trunk and it happened to not to be rotating. Basically in, uh, in its uh, operation uh, it's supposed to be rotating freely but uh, uh, one way or the other it is jammed. So today we are going to open it because that is the uh, only way we can be able to know uh, what is wrong with it. So if we can be able to walk you through the, uh, the parts consisting of this uh, vacuum pump. We have the oil pump. Uh, so this is the oil reservoir here. So the oil is going to come into the pump up to here. This is where we, you, uh, the oil is going to be dropping uh, into the chamber to lubricate the veins. Uh, because as we say, this is a, a lottery vacuum pump. So it's going to lubricate. We have the silencer. So this is the housing. Uh, this is the pulley. This is a belt driven. So you have the drive belt attached here into the PTO uh, from, the, from, the, from the vehicle. So the PTO is uh, power takeoff removed from the, uh, from the gearbox. So the, as we say, this pump is not rotating. Uh, and that means uh, my guess is that we, we might be able to have a, a broken uh, blade inside there. Uh, the only way we can be able to have a broken bread is maybe some falling object have entered into the into the chamber or maybe there was no lubrication uh, or maybe there is a bearing which is jammed but the only way we can be able to to answer all those questions is to de is to remove everything is to dissect it to remove everything so we are, we are going to use uh, basic tools. We have our standard rebuild kit. So we have our bread, uh, gaskets, and everything. We are going to use a uh, 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 smooth uh, sand paper, just in case we, we need to, to sand the housing. So we have uh, a pipe wrench, in case we need to remove this gauge. We have a pulley, uh, a bearing puller, because we have to remove the pulley. Uh, we might be able to change the, the bearing, so we will need a circuit pliers. Uh, you need a hammer. You don't need this. Uh, you don't necessarily need a, a strong hammer, but I'm basically using uh, this one. So this is my secret. I will tell you how it does uh, the, uh, when I'm using it. And a socket spanner. Basically, we are going to require 10 millimeter to open the to open the pump. We are going to require 15 millimeter and uh, 13 millimeter socket spanner. So, let's get to work. So we are going to start from this side. We are going to, de to remove the pump, uh, the oil pump. We remove this side plate, and then we can be able to remove uh, the rotor uh, and the bread. That's where we can be able to see what is inside. After that, we are going to remove all these parts. So we have the, the relief valve, we have the gauge, the vacuum gauge, uh, the silencer, we are going to remove all of us so that we can be able to clean them. But the problem will be inside here. This is the pump. So we have this, uh, uh, th this will be locked inside here. So when the rotor is rotating, this one now, uh, this one which is the one which usually connect uh, the rotor and the pump. And this is what's going to, to drive the pump so that it can be able to pump oil up to the, up to the, the oil knob here. So if you don't have this, uh, that means your pump cannot be able to work. And the pump, uh, when you rotate the pump, you can be able to, uh, you can be able to feel the pump rotates uh, freely. So on this side bridge, you are going to see there are two, so there are two holes here. 
uh, which were not left, not intentionally, because once uh, once you loosen all these bolts, you are supposed to tighten two bolts here on these two holes, and that is going to pull uh, to pull this side side plate. Uh, on this side. So first you are going to loosen it and then you are going to tighten two bolts on these holes which is going to pull this side plate. So the 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 two holes which we say in, uh, this way we are going to tighten uh, one of these uh, 15 millimeter bolts on the two sides. And this is what's going to uh, to pull this uh, this side print uh, on this side. And, and remember I told you about this, uh, my secret. So I usually put it uh, uh, somewhere here. This is because when I'm, uh, when I'm pulling, I'm pulling that side print. So sometimes, because there's a bearing here, uh, this rotor might be able to be forced on that side, and that, uh, that, one, th that side plate is not going to come out. So I usually put this, uh, a piece of board here to rock, this, uh, to rock the rotor from, uh, from being pulled this way. Uh, this board, and uh, simultaneously, So you can be able to see uh, somehow, so the sludge go, got caught inside the, uh, the the chamber, and you cannot be able to see all this uh, all this trash. Uh, and these are the ones which made uh, uh, the pump to jump. The sludge is not supposed to get inside here, so the truck is usually installed with two. We are going to do another video about all the things which are supposed to, to, to prevent sludge from getting inside the, uh, the chamber. So there's primary uh, and secondary shot of valve, uh, which usually prevents sludge from getting inside here, because when it gets inside here, it usually jam, uh, uh, jam the rotor. Uh, and you can see all those, all these sludge inside the, the, bra the, the rotor, and then the blade are going to jam. So we might, might be able to find uh, uh, the blade are jammed. So they are not even coming out. So we are going to go to the other side uh, and open so that we can be able to remove now the rotor and check, uh, observe uh, inside. So we are going to, to remove this, uh, uh, this pulley so that we can be able to access the, uh, the, this other side plate. So we remove the rotor, uh, yeah. and you can be able to see uh, why it was jammed because all these foreign materials uh, got stuck uh, inside here. As I said, there's no foreign material which is supposed to get into the uh, to the bed's chamber. Uh, the trucks, the vehicle usually is supposed to be installed with a uh, a shut off valve, overflow shut off valve, where where the sludge overflows in the the the, vacu the on the the tank, the sludge cannot be able to overflow to come into uh, into the pump. 
So basically the usual uh, primary sh uh, shuttle valve, a secondary shuttle valve, uh, so that there's no way, uh, there's no way the sludge is going to get in the chamber. So our, th as I said, this uh, this pump was removed from our our tanker, which has already been installed with those uh, primary and secondary shuttle valve. So we might be able to do another video uh, observing why, uh, whether those 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 two uh, valves are operational and why all these material got into the pump. Basically, these are supposed to rotate freely, and when all this material get inside here, it, the rotor usually jammed, and it cannot be able to rotate. So, let's get these things heavy. So yeah, so these are the braids. Uh, you can be able to see all the things which are stuck uh, stuck inside. Slippery a little bit. Uh, uh, you can be able to see all of this material. These are the one which made the uh, the pump to jump. All these uh, codoms. Let's try to remove this guy. We might have, we might be able to you might be able to remove to to replace these uh, plates anyway. So. Yeah, so this pump uh, installed with the uh, seven braids. Uh, uh, we are going to replace these guys with the uh, with the new one and clean all of this mess. Uh, if my camera man can be able to show you inside, you can be able to see all of this uh, all of these foreign material which are which are stuck inside here. So we are going to clean everything. Uh, uh, Clean everything, install new braids, uh, and that that will be it. But first, let us remove. Uh, we are going also to remove all of these other remaining parts. So let's remove other the other remaining parts. Remove this uh, this vacuum gauge. This is a vacuum gauge. Uh, Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we are going to remove this. Uh, uh, actually, we can remove the uh, the silencer. Uh, and then we open this uh, 13 millimeter uh, bolt. Yep, and we are in. Uh, uh, 
this is the oil gauge this is the oil chamber and this is where the foreign material usually get into the uh, into the pump you can be able to see all this so we are going to clean up uh, uh, to clean up everything in this side plate you know there's, there's, they're, they're, they're supposed to have a uh, grease and you can be able to see that uh, we have this uh, grease nipple uh, which you are supposed to put grease so that we can be able to lubricate this bearing and you can be able to see also the bearing uh, is damaged and I think uh, although there are there are there foreign uh, foreign material in the rotor I think also this bearing was jammed the way I'm seeing it uh, this uh, 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 the way I'm seeing although it's although it's rotating but uh, this bearing is also damaged so it was part uh, it was part of the the, the problem which was causing the uh, the rotor not to rotate so we have to replace this bearing Uh, you can see the bearing you have to replace this one you have two oil seals also you have to replace on this side uh, we have the bearing although this is also the bearing seems to be working fine but uh, since we are replacing this bearing we are also going to replace this one So this is the oil regulation valve. This one, this is the one which usually regulate the, the oil, the lubricating oil which is going inside to lubricate the uh, the vents. So I'm using my adjustable spanner uh, to loosen it. You seeing it? Uh, although there's no uh, there's no that uh, falling object inside, but. Uh, is that we are going to clean it up also? Or the, this uh, grease, uh, grease can. So uh, we are going to clean it up and also replace this grease seal.
So we have got uh, everything cleaned up uh, and now it's time to rebuild again. So uh, we we'll start with the head plates. So here you are going to you are going to put the uh, the seals and the bearings. I usually like to start uh, lubricating where the the seal and the bearing is going to to sit, just to make it easy to install. Just a little bit of uh, of some grease. The rebuild kit usually comes with all, all seals uh, for each and every part. So uh, you just put uh, two of them. So we are installing a new bearing. Uh, so and I usually I have to remove this uh, this plastic because I want to it, it will be greased. You add, uh, add some grease. So I use the, the other bearing which came, uh, which we replaced to drive this one into its place. I don't want to hit on this one because if I hit it direct, it's going to damage it. So I'm going to use uh, this bearing to drive it. to tap and you are good to go so so we are going to do to do the same on the other plate After we have done with this, uh, putting the bearing and the seal on the head plate, it's time to install one of these plates. So as usual, just to make sure that uh, uh, it's going to go in easily. So I usually apply a little bit of grease. Uh, You might be forced to use some uh, a hammer and to drive it in. Hit it carefully, you don't damage the, the bearing. If you have a press, that will be easy. If you don't have a press machine, so you can just use carefully, tap it, four sides. Read the in. So the next stop you're going to fit uh, to fit this. Uh, so most of the time, uh, you might be able to ask yourself how, where, which side goes where, you know, because each uh, this one, this uh, this can be able to. You, if you put it on this side, uh, it's going to go in, but. Uh, Sometimes you ask yourself, so which side, which side are you going to put? So this is the guide. 
because this is where this is the the pipe for oil and we said the oil is being pumped usually pumped on uh, by this side so this side is supposed to come here so you are going to put it uh, we have to to change it so that we put it in this direction so that that uh, that uh, that side can be able to align with the with the oil pump so we have our gasket so these these are not the original gasket which came with the uh, with the standard uh, rebuild kit so i somehow used this uh, this gasket on the other pump so i had to fabricate this one from scratch uh, and to make sure it doesn't uh, mess around when we are when we are storing i'm going to apply a little bit of uh, grease so that it can be able to stick into this side Just hold it in the middle and put it in. Yeah, and that is it. Yeah, it's supposed to. So once we install this, it's supposed to uh, to come up. Yeah. So now it's time to put the uh, to install to install the braids. This braid usually have uh, two sides, which are different. You know, one side is flat. Uh, one side is flat and another one the other side is a little bit like curved so this flat side is the one which is supposed to come and sit here so the other one is the one which usually slides uh, where the pump is running so you install on the the flat side go inside so I've seen I've seen some people who usually dip this uh, inside the oil and then install it uh, I've never done that. I've never had any problem. So because eventually before we run the pump, we are, st we are going to uh, we are going to lubricate. They usually have the lubrication going on. So I usually don't see uh, the need of dipping them in uh, in oil. And then. Yep. So, what's that? So it's going to be pulled once we start uh, uh, tightening the bolts. Yep, and you find that if you try to rotate it, it's not going to rotate because it's, this bearing has not yet uh, sat on its place. It's rotating it, uh, and you're using some uh, uh, some strength to rotate it. But uh, once you remove, if you tap a little bit, the bearing is going to sit on. Uh,
if you try to rotate it, it's rotating freely. And you can be able to hear the bread. That's how it's supposed to be. So we have the the pump, the this of the rock. Uh, we have some uh, oiling. So this rock is supposed to come and and sit there. And is the one which usually drive the pump. So we take the oiling. The gasket and you take our 10 uh, 10 millimeter bolts So now we can store the the top part. Uh, we can install the the oil drop valve you can put a little bit of a thread tape so we have this feeder pipe we have the other one so we put a little bit of grease here Dead. and put a little bit uh, of grease so eventually this will be greased from this uh, from grease uh, this nipple but they're just putting uh, a little bit of grease So we usually prefer to, uh, some people usually put the uh, engine oil, uh, but we prefer hydraulic oil. And th this is the recommended for the, for the vacuum pumps. And this one usually, uh, we usually put uh, three liters. You see the oil gauge. You can see it's in between the the uh, the maximum and the minimum, which is which is good. And with that, we are done. Uh, 
We are meaning to install this to a, into a truck. Yeah, so here we are going to, you just import this, uh, uh, this pulley and then install it in the truck, in the truck. So there's a lock, we are going to put the lock during installation and uh, the pump is good to go. So we have already uh, finished installing everything, our pump is ready uh, for the installation. We are going to install it in our truck, uh, maybe we are going to do another video. Uh, to check its uh, operation. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time.